hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. hydrogen. Hydrogen has the potential to make all forms of transportation go carbon neutral. The question is, will we actually take advantage of this new fuel source? Well, we already do with rockets, which combust hydrogen with oxygen, and it's pretty clear that there is a lot of potential energy in the fuel, which begs the question, if something as technologically complex as a rocket can use it, then why has it not been widely adopted in other modes of transportation? At first glance, there's no actual downside to it. Hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe, and combusting it in a car's engine, a plane's jets, or even in a rocket only produces water. It seems like the perfect solution to the climate crisis, and yet there are some simple reasons why we don't reap its benefits. Hello people of the internet, I'm Nico, a former engineering student, a current Google search user, and either a future full-time YouTuber or a homeless person. Let's explore the reasons why hydrogen could be the answer to the climate crisis, but is First, let's take a look at how hydrogen gets used today. Currently, the most popular use of hydrogen is not in cars, but in rockets. Hydrogen is an incredibly light fuel, being the lightest element on the periodic table, making it ideal for flight applications. Well, some of them. For rockets, fuel isn't added until just hours before launch, and the cost of building double-walled insulated tanks is justified for the benefits of using liquid hydrogen as a fuel source. In the case where keeping hydrogen in liquid form is not practical, putting it under immense pressure is a good alternative like it's being used in cars today. Toyota's Mirai, for example, uses high-pressure vessels, basically dummy-thick tanks, for storing hydrogen as the fuel source to produce electricity, which powers the car's electric motor. And for producing electricity, hydrogen is actually a great source because of the way we currently produce hydrogen. The easiest way for us to get hydrogen, aside from finding it underground, which I will get to later, is by splitting it from oxygen. Now, if you remember your elementary school science class, hydrogen and oxygen is just water, which there is plenty of in this world. And if you channel the power of the dark side and zap the water molecules, you can separate the hydrogen. This process is called electrolysis, but if you reverse the process, combining hydrogen with oxygen, you get electricity and water. That is exactly what happens in the Toyota Mirai, and it means you can travel on electric power, get over 300 miles of range, but you don't have to wait an eternity for a battery to recharge. Sounds great, but then why do we not see more widespread adoption of hydrogen power? It's complicated to say the least, but we'll break it down into two categories. Hydrogen for producing electricity and hydrogen for combustion. In the case of using hydrogen to produce electricity, it's actually not too far away from widespread adoption. Take the Toyota Mirai again as an example. The technology itself works and is fairly practical in use, which is usually not the case for revolutionary technology. Currently, there are just two problems holding back hydrogen. One is public perception. Any reasonable person will be concerned with having tanks in the car storing a flammable gas at roughly 10,000 PSI. It's the same fear of possible disaster that plagues nuclear power. The other problem is the lack of infrastructure to support the technology. This problem has plagued battery electric cars for years, but it is far more problematic for hydrogen cars. Hydrogen infrastructure is more difficult and expensive to build than electric infrastructure, and the only way companies will invest in building the infrastructure is if there is a large enough customer base to support it. Of course, for customers to switch to this new technology, they will wait until the infrastructure is there to support their needs, so for now, hydrogen power is in a catch-22. And if you decide to negate the public perception problem by storing hydrogen in liquid form, then the infrastructure problems get even worse. In order to stay in liquid form, hydrogen needs to be at negative 253 degrees Celsius, which is about 100 degrees colder than the tanks of natural gas I've been showing you footage of. It's not impossible to do so, but the energy requirements make this impractical. So what if you want to use hydrogen for combustion? 
Well, take all of the previous infrastructure, practicality, and public perception problems, but add on to it. The main problem is that hydrogen is far more expensive than its fossil fuel alternatives. In the case of electric cars, this kind of gets balanced out thanks to electric motors being very energy efficient, but when it comes to combusting the fuel, this cost gets very problematic. Let me show you just how problematic. Some quick baseline facts. In 2021, hydrogen was $16.50 per kilogram, and a gallon of gasoline was about $3. Now, because a kilogram of hydrogen and a gallon of gasoline have about the same amount of energy, we can say that hydrogen is over four times as expensive as gasoline in 2021. This problem gets compounded because of the density of hydrogen. In the Toyota Mirai, the 142 liter 37.5 gallon tank can hold 5.6 kilograms of hydrogen. Now, because we have this rare instance of metric and American units agreeing, we can interchange these freely in any car's fuel efficiency figures. For example, my 2017 Volkswagen Jetta with a full 14.5 gallon tank can drive 580 miles with the EPA's estimated 40 miles per gallon highway. But if you filled the 14.5 gallon tank with hydrogen, assuming the tank can safely take hydrogen at 10,000 PSI, you could only fit 2.17 kilograms in the tank, giving me a range of 80 miles. So in conclusion, I would get a seventh of the range at four times the cost, but that could change soon. Recently, scientists who ironically were searching for fossil fuel reserves stumbled upon a reserve of white hydrogen. Now, for those of you not in the know, white hydrogen is just a term used for one of the many different types of hydrogen commonly referred to today. All of the different types of hydrogen have colors corresponding to the fuel source used during production. There's brown, gray, blue, and green. White hydrogen is different though because it occurs naturally underground, and this is what scientists recently found in France. Current estimates for global white hydrogen reserves are in the tens of billions of tons, and even if we could access just 1% of it, it would provide five times the current global production for the next 200 years. If we can access this much white hydrogen, then the cost will likely drop substantially, making it a far more appealing alternative to fossil fuels. So while hydrogen still seems to be a far off future for transportation, it may be that the future has just taken a big step closer to the present. Now, if you haven't heard about what Porsche is doing with hydrogen, using it to reverse engineer carbon neutral gasoline, then you may be interested in this video I made a couple of months ago. I covered the science of how it works and some pros and cons, but I plan to revisit the topic because I had a curious thought about how it could be used politically. Now, if you're interested in that and would also like to see more videos like this where I explain different things about how the automotive industry and related industries affect our lives, then consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind later. Until next time, people of the internet, peace out.